Okay, this is the start of chapter 17, section 17.1. Um, we're talking about equilibrium here. And the first two things we're going to talk about are um, these two objectives here. We're not going to get to the third one in this video. We'll save it for the second one. We're going to talk about chemical equilibrium and talk about the characteristics of that. We're going to write equilibrium expressions for systems that are equilibrium. Okay, so in the next video we'll do the calculate the equilibrium constants from concentration data. Okay, so free energy available to do work. That was from chapter 15. Okay, so we're going to get to be um, equilibrium constant. These first five, we're going to get to those. We're going to save those homogeneous and heterogeneous equilibriums till the next video. Okay, so chemical equilibrium is described um, by an equilibrium constant expression that relates to concentrations of the reactants and the products. Okay, we'll explain more what that means in a minute. Okay, so we have this graph of equilibrium. Okay, so this is um, graphing this equation here where we have nitrogen plus hydrogen forms ammonia. Okay, so this is a balanced equation one molecule of nitrogen, th three molecules of hydrogen, form two molecules of ammonia. Okay, but the thing that's different about this equation is that we have this double arrow here. That means when we have the double arrow, we have, instead of just the reactants forming the products, we also have the products breaking down to form the reactants. Okay, so that's what happens in equilibrium. This equation goes both ways. Reactants form products, products form reactants. Okay, so what this graph is showing us here, the blue is the hydrogen, the red is the nitrogen, and the purple is the ammonia. Okay, so at the initial, before we um, start this reaction, we have high concentrations of hydrogen and nitrogen and zero concentrations of ammonia. Okay, so when we mix these two reactants together, they start forming ammonia. Okay, so the concentrations of the two reactants go down and the concentration of the ammonia goes up. But after a while, instead of it all being ammonia like we were used to, the concentrations level off and they become constant. So the concentration of ammonia stays steady, the concentration of hydrogen stays steady, and the same for nitrogen. Okay, so this is the equilibrium part here where, the, where they have a steady concentration of reactants and products. Okay, so this is called the reversible reaction. Okay, um, that's where the, the reactions go forward, that's to the products, or reversed to the reactants. And this is what happens in ammonia. Okay, so how does reversibility affect that? So we start out with the nitrogen and hydrogen, it starts forming a little bit of ammonia, then this one is the equilibrium where the ammonia and the nitrogen and the hydrogen are constantly forming and reforming and breaking down. So the nitrogen and hydrogen are continually forming ammonia. The ammonia is continually breaking down. And so they have this reaction going back and forth all the time. But the concentrations of these three um, form these three chemicals all stay the same after it reaches equilibrium. So the nitrogen level concentration level stays constant as do the hydrogen and the ammonia. That's when you reach a state of ke chemical equilibrium. Okay, so the products forward reaction, the reactants are reverse reaction, and these forward and reverse reactions take place at equal rates. So in equilibrium the reaction hasn't stopped. It hasn't said, okay, we're good. We have only have this many products, this many reactants, and we stop, but it keeps going. Those reactants keep forming products. Those products keep breaking down back into reactants. Okay, so that's what equilibrium is. It's a dynamic state of action. Okay, so we're going to talk about equilibrium exp expressions in this next little section here. Some chemical systems have a tendency to react, um, little tendency to react, and others go to completion. We've been talking about, up till now, reactions that go to completion, like the uh, combustion of methane, for instance. Okay, but there's a lot of them that don't go to completion, and we, we reach an equilibrium state. So that's why we're having the whole chapter on this chemical equilibrium. 
And this, the law of chemical equilibrium states that a given temperature, a chemical system might reach a state in which a particular ratio of the product, reactant and product concentrations has a constant value. And this constant value is the equilibrium constant. We note that with a capital K and a little EQ to say, okay, that's the equilibrium. And it's a numerical value, the ratio of the product concentrations to the reactant concentrations. Okay, so the concentrations are almost always the molarity. Okay, so if you forgot what molarity is, molarity is moles per liter, and the symbol for it is a capital M. And then we take those concentrations, the molarity of each reactant and product, and raise it to a power equal to its coefficient that the coefficient from the balanced equation. So I'll show you what that means on the next slide. Okay, so this is a general equation for equilibrium reaction. We have two reactants, A and B, making two products, C and D. The little A, B, C, and D in front of those capital letters represent the coefficients, okay? And the A, B, C, and D are molarity, the concentration of those um, reactants and products, okay? So this is what equilibrium constant, constant looks like. It's the ratio of the products raised to that coefficient power over the reactants raised to their coefficient power. So A, so when they put these little square brackets around the uh, A and the concentrations of the reactants and products to let us know that that's, that's the, we're doing with concentrations. Okay, so it looks like this. It looks a little, a lot of letters there, but I'll show you what it looks like when we go from a real equation to a real equi um, equilibrium constant. It's not that bad. Okay, so these, almost all these uh, equilibrium constants are going to be at a specific temperature. So we're not going to deal with equilibrium constants at different temperatures, but we are going to um, keep it at 25 degrees C or 298 Kelvin. Okay, so if the equilibrium constant is greater than one, so this fraction, right, this top number is divided by the bottom numbers, right? The top numbers are the products. So if the concentration of the products is greater than the concentration of the reactants on the bottom, then that means the product, we have more products at equilibrium. The opposite, if this fraction is less than one, then that means that the the product number concentrations are smaller on top and the reactant concentrations are bigger on the bottom. That'll give us a fraction that's less than one. Okay, so we're gonna practice writing an equilibrium expression with this ammonia equation that we introduced earlier. Okay, so you, uh, we know what the reactants and the products are, right? The nitrogen and hydrogen are the reactants, the ammonia is the product. Okay, so what's gonna go on top? Okay, the products always go on top. Okay, so the nitrogen's concentration is going to go on top, and it has this two here for a coefficient, so it's going to be NH3 raised to the second power. These two are the reactants; they're going to go on the bottom, so N2 would be like the A, and you know it's raised to its coefficient's power too. But if it doesn't have a coefficient, well, it actually does have a coefficient. It's actually one. But when we raise anything to the first power, we get one. And the nit the hydrogen will be raised to the third power. So it looks like this. I put the one in there just to show you that there is a power there. This is raised to a power. But since the power is one, we always leave it off since anything to the first power is that same value again. So these are the molarities again in the square brackets, the moles per liter. Okay, so this two came from that coefficient there. So this is in the concentration of the ammonia squared. This is the concentration of hydrogen cubed times the concentration of nitrogen. Okay, so this is our equilibrium expression. We put the products on top, raised to their coefficient power, divided by the reactants on the bottom, raised to whatever coefficient is in the equation. Okay, so have a little end of this video here. So write an expression, equilibrium constant expression for the following reaction. Okay, so we have this reaction going back and forth here. We have this product NO2, and we have this reactant N2O4. So what's going to go on top? 
Is there going to be a power to it? Yeah. Okay, so the NO2 is going to be on top squared. The N2O4 is going to be on the bottom. No exponent because it's 1. Okay, so what about this one? What are the products? What are the reactants? Okay, so the products are going to go on top. Two products. One reactant. Okay, so you may want to pause the video and write this down for yourself and see if you match what I get. Okay, this is the answer, right? The hydrogen is squared. The hydrogen constant, we put everything in square brackets, right? The hydrogen concentration is squared because of the 2. The S2 is just by itself. No, I mean, it's just alone. And this, when we put these two things together, we imply that those two are multiplied together. And the H2S2 has a 2 in front of it, so we make that the power there. Okay, so this equation has, they all have, um, coefficients in front of the, the formulas there. So each one of these is going to have an exponent. So these are my products. They're going to go on top. These are my reactants. They're going to go on the bottom. So give a little pause and see if you can match what I get here. Okay, so this is the equilibrium, equilibrium expression for this reaction. The NO to the fourth power, the water to the sixth, the ammonia to the fourth, and the oxygen to the fifth. Okay, so that's all we're going to do in this part one video. We're going to uh, stop there, and I will um, answer the questions down below, and I'll see you guys in class tomorrow.